This video will demonstrate an example of factoring a quadratic with leading coefficient greater than 1, problem type 1. In this video, we'll be using two different techniques to factor the expression 5x squared plus 11x plus 2. When we factor this, that means we'll rewrite it as two binomials multiplied together. These two binomials will have the form ax, so some number times x, plus m, some other number, times another thing, bx, where it's some number times x plus n, another number. And we need to figure out what a, m, b, and n are, what those numbers need to be, in order for this expression to equal our original expression after we multiply these binomials together. So to start, let's multiply these two binomials with these variables in here and see what that looks like. If we use the FOIL technique, then our first step is to multiply the first term in each of these binomials. So that's ax times bx. And that gives us abx squared. The next step is to multiply the first term in our first binomial with the last term in our second binomial. We call these the outer terms. When we multiply these two terms, we have a times n times x. And our next step is to multiply these inner terms, which gives us b times n times x. And finally, we multiply our last terms, m and n, which gives us m times n, added to the rest of it. Remember that we want to choose values for a, m, b, and n so that this expression, when these two binomials are multiplied, will equal our original expression. And so we're trying to find values of a, m, b, and n that will make this true. Comparing the two expressions, we see that in our original expression, the only term with x squared is 5x squared. And in our other expression, the only term with x squared is abx squared. This tells us that if we want these two expressions to be equal, that ab must equal 5. Since 5 is a prime number, the only numbers that multiply to 5 are 5 and 1. So a and b are 5 and 1. a could be 5 and b could be 1 or the other way around. It doesn't really matter at this point. So let's choose a to equal 5 and b to equal 1. Now that we've figured out the values of a and b, I went ahead and replaced all the a's with 5 and all the b's so far with 1. Now our next step is to figure out what m and n must equal. The next thing that we might notice is that the only term in our original expression without a variable x is 2, and the only term in this expression without x is mn. This tells us that m times n must equal 2. If m times n equals 2, then there are a few different values that m and n could have for this to be true. We could have m equal 1 and n equal 2. We could also have m equal negative 1 and n equal negative 2, since negative 1 times negative 2 also equals 2. Or we could switch it around, have m equal 2 and n equal 1, or m could equal negative 2 and n could equal negative 1. So these are all the different possible combinations of values for m and n to be multiplied and equal 2. We aren't sure yet which is the correct one. The next thing we can tell from these two expressions is that in this expression, the only term with just x, not x squared, is 11x. And in this expression, the only terms with just an x are 5nx plus 1mx. This tells us that 5nx plus 1mx must equal 11x. If we divide both sides by x, this equation becomes 5n plus 1m equals 11. If we recall from previously, we know that m times n multiply to 2, so they have one of these four pairs of values. So we can test each of these possible values for m and n to see if they also will make this equation true. And if there's a combination of m and n that multiplies to 2 and makes this equation true, then we found the values for m and n. Let's test m equals 1 and n equals 2 first. If m equals 1 and n equals 2, then our equation looks like this. 5 times 2 plus 1 times 1 equals 11. This equation is actually true, which means that if m equals 1 and n equals 2, then our last term, n times n, will equal 2 just like it should, and our middle terms, 5nx plus 1mx, will equal 11x just like they also should. So this is a good set of values for m and n. 
We could also test the rest of these and we would see that they do not make this equation true. Now that we've found the values of m and n, we can replace m and n in our factored expression with those values 1 and 2 and we found our final answer. a is 5, b is 1, m is 1, and n is 2. So we found our factored version of this quadratic expression. 5x squared plus 11x plus 2 equals 5x plus 1 times 1x plus 2. And we can test this again by multiplying these together using the foiling technique and we should see if that matches our original expression. So let's try that again. When we multiply our first terms we get 5x times 1x which is 5x squared. When we multiply our outer terms we have 5x times 2 which is 10x. When we multiply our inner terms we get 1 times 1x which is 1x. And then finally when we multiply our last terms we have 1 times 2 which is 2. And this simplifies to 5x squared. 10x plus 1x is plus 11x and then plus 2 at the end. This matches our original expression, meaning that this factored version is equal to our original expression, so we have factored it correctly. Let's try this same problem using a different technique. In this technique, we'll use an x to organize our work. In the top of the x, we'll multiply our first and last coefficients. So that's 5 times 2. 10 will go up in the top and 11 will go in the bottom. Next we're going to find two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 11. Let's list all the numbers that multiply to 10. We could have 1 times 10, negative 1 times negative 10, 2 times 5, or negative 2 times negative 5. Remember we're also looking for numbers that will add to 11. So out of these four pairs, 1 and 10 are the only numbers that add to 11, so we'll choose those to put in the other sides of our x. The purpose of this x was only to help us stay organized. So now that we found these numbers 1 and 10, we don't need the x anymore. We just need these numbers 1 and 10. We're going to use those to rewrite this expression. We will rewrite our middle term 11x as 1x plus 10x, and we got those numbers from our x over here. And so this expression is equal to our original one. We just rewrote 11x as 1x plus 10x, but it's still equal. Our next step is to factor out the greatest common factor of these first two terms, which is x. So we'll factor out x from both of these two terms. We'll do the same thing with our second pair of terms. We'll factor out the greatest common factor of these two terms, which is 2. Since both of these new terms have 5x plus 1 multiplied in them, we can factor out 5x plus 1 from both of these terms. When we factor that out, we're left with x plus 2. And this expression is equal to our original expression, but we've now factored it completely. And this is the exact same result that we got using our original method. Both of these techniques are valid in any type of problem similar to this but they will take some practice, so keep working on it and let us know if you need any more help.